is I mentioned earlier the New York Times talking about UFOs in a new way, basically. Mm. And that's exciting to me because I've been uh, researching fringe topics, including UFOs, for probably five or six years. I like, I like to discover undervalued ideas. I like to look for what's the thing everybody's missing? What's the yeah. exciting big breakthrough that's out there that people just aren't paying attention to? And uh, so I, Idea Markets is, is, is built for me in, yeah. in that way as well. I love it. So, have, yeah. Have you um, come across um, Graham Hancock? Graham Hancock, yeah. I've glancingly come across him Yes, I have not not done at all a deep dive, but I know he's a respected figure in those kinds of circles. So check out his interview with Joe Rogan and Randall Carlson. Basically, like the general idea is that um, civilization might have existed a lot longer ago than we previously thought. Like we currently yes, think that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And. So I think we, we thought that the first civilizations cropped up, you know, 10,000 years ago, something like that. Um, but yeah. there's evidence that there are structures that are at least 12,000 years old and that what it looks like is about 12,000 years ago, a um, meteor or comet impacted into, um, I think, Canada, or where Canada is today. Back then it was under a sheet of ice that was like a mile thick and caused a tremendous amount of water to melt and cascade across the earth and caused you know, tremendous devastation. Yeah. Um, and they think that it was this event that could have caused what basically the, I, I think the general idea is that there were civilizations scattered across earth that were far more advanced than we give them, that we currently give them credit for. And that this cataclysmic event kind of wiped out humanity um, well, you know, not wiped out, but, you know, reduced our population by like, you know, 90% or something. And that yeah. over the past 10,000 years, it's just been us picking up the pieces and coming back to, you know, like figuring stuff out again. Um, there's a place I think in Turkey called Gobleki Tepe, which is about 12,000 years old. Um, and it was, it's this, it's this um, archeological site with all these different structures that has been buried, I think. Like it was actively buried. Um, for some reason, and, and it's huge. And the soil that they dated there is 12,000 years old. So it was buried 12,000 years ago, but we don't know how long um, it was standing before then. And I yeah. think there's little ev there's evidence of this, of, of these little pockets everywhere. Yeah, um, it's very interesting. So it's, it's just fascinating because like all of our, like I think most cultures have this story of the great flood, right? Yep. And yep. something like a great flood happened 12,000 years ago. Um, so I'm really excited for what, you know, take drones and then you take them to mapping the ocean floor, you know, so we, we take this technology and then we just apply it to completely mapping the ocean floor. I'm, I'm painfully curious about what that will uncover. Yeah. Yeah. Hidden, hidden yeah. civilizations and cities. And, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if factions of, you know, various militaries or mili military industrial complex companies know an unbelievable amount about all this already. Um, not only from technology we know they have, like satellites that could probably send radio waves to the bottom of the earth and map it, you know, like a piece of cake. Yeah, yeah, true. Bottom, bottom of the ocean, not bottom of the earth, bottom of the ocean. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, um, and I think one of one of the one of the ideas behind idea markets is that oh there's this there's this great quote by Marshall McLuhan. Are you familiar with Marshall McLuhan? Uh, his famous most famous quote is the medium is the message. But this other one I really love, and what he said was, the biggest secrets are kept by public incredulity. It's not that the knowledge is kept secret cloistered never gets out it's that it gets out but it never gets cool it never gets authorized and so with the invention of the internet uh i'm very eager to see what pieces can be put together what it turns out we already know but don't publicly 
uh, acknowledge. And the kinds of things that you're talking about, like these ancient human civilizations, um, uh, I don't. I don't believe it's a coincidence that you're not the first really smart person I've heard mention mention this. When how many years ago it would have sounded absolutely Bunkers. insane, but it, it would have sounded like you know tabloid, you know, checkout counter, you know, at the grocery store tabloid kind of thing. And now it's you know a a, a matter of serious discourse as it's always deserved to be. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited about that. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, yeah. it's, it's good because I think in that interview, I think it's true, they're long, they're very long, um, but worth diving into. Randall Carlson, I think he's a, he's a geologist and he kind of walks through the dramatic landscape changes that have occurred in America over the, the, in, during that period of time and how just there's evidence of just ice and water just cascading down the Americas. and like the depositing of boulders that are like, you know, a hundred tons or 150 tons or something up in mountains. And that rock originates far further North. So like that wouldn't have happened unless there was either giants running around playing catch, you know, across the, <laughs> across the Americas yeah. or perhaps a glacier that could carry it down. Um, there's just all these things, many of which I've, I've kind of forgotten. Um, but it's just fascinating. fascinating yeah, those are, yeah, absolutely. There's just, there's there's so much so much more out there the common knowledge is just so rarely the best knowledge that uh there's this there's there's an enormous amount to discover f from among things we think we already know well it's very exciting yeah i think one of the biggest developments in perhaps the history of our species is this talk of aliens and like it's going full on mainstream yeah um i've I had an experience about 10 years ago, five years ago, right? It's not too, it's nothing too fascinating as many of these stories are, but I was just sober, which is important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was looking up at the stars in, um, on the sunshine coast in Australia. And I just saw these five or six floating orbs that were a couple hundred meters up in the air and they're floating in formation, you know, moving at a uniform speed. And then something happened and they just rearranged very fluidly into another formation while maintaining their speed and just disappearing across the night sky. And it was, it was silent. Like there was no sound way yeah. lower than a plane would fly. Um, and even a drone because I've heard drones at that height and you can kind of hear sure. it. Sure. Sure. Yeah, just these floating orbs. And, and nobody it, makes orbs of light. No earthly company that we know of makes orbs of light. I would like one if they did, you know, right? it wouldn't mean yeah. in the garden, you know, just these little floating orbs, just that would be lovely. Cool. Yeah, totally. Totally. But the, the coolest thing is, and like it was the night, the night before was the night of the Gemini media shower. Oh, and wow. I saw like 11 shooting stars that night. And I was like, I'm going to wrap these motherfuckers into one wish. Cause that's going to be super powerful. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm not going to just make 11 wishes. I didn't have time for that. I'm just going to bundle them. And I wished what? to contact aliens or to see aliens. That's amazing. The night before I, I, I shit you that's not. Amazing. And the next night that happened. That's I mean, amazing. It's just a dramatic coincidence, but I, there's no explanation for what I saw. I, I do not think that is a coincidence. Uh, I've, I've heard stories like that before. Um, and that, that's awesome. Yeah. But, uh, no, it would, it would, it would be absolutely, um, plausible that advanced life forms have like a consciousness radio that they're listening for people who are who have 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 the right intent and are interested in and capable of handling uh some kind of contact uh mm. that, that just makes makes perfect sense uh, wouldn't mind the actual yeah. contacts like a fist bump right <laughs> yeah. well uh i'll, I'll you know, honestly <laughs> at the point where i'm like there's hope yeah yeah seriously seriously i really think there's hope like I've been saying this for a while, even before then, that my dream job is Earth ambassador. Like to, you know, go off. There are a lot of planets aliens. out there. They'll probably need you. They'll probably yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But just to go with one of these um these alien races and then just kind of represent Earth and have a conversation, you know, maybe come home every now and again. But just like the idea of how what we could learn about the world, yeah. um, just is is baffling.
I would, I'd have no problem sending you as a representative of Earth, just so you know. You, you oh, got thank you. I got, thank that's, you. That, that's a big job, but I think you could do it. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I, I maybe, I, I wouldn't put myself as the first person, but like if there were many planets, I wouldn't like to be one of them. But like, oh I yeah, sure. And I, I wouldn't burden you with being, with being like, you know, Benjamin Franklin or whatever. But yeah, you know, if, yeah, you want, yeah. if you want to go to, you know, the, the Liechtenstein of the uh, Milky Way, that's fine. <laughs> yeah.